Uh, the first question I want to ask you as we kind of kick this off, you started your business when you were, I think, four years old? Uh, well, my first version of my business was I made when I was four and a half years old, yes. Okay, tell me about that. Like, how is that even possible? So, my parents taught me to read at a very young age, and I mean very how young. old? I was uh, three months old when they started teaching me to read. Oh, wow. So, I was using, um, they were using this um, process called uh, Your Baby Can Read. I don't remember exactly what the name of the science was, but... Uh, you don't remember it because you were three months old? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad told me the science behind it, but the process was a product called Your Baby Can Read, and which, how it works is, you use flashcards and images to teach words first, and then you work on the alphabet last. Because like with numbers, if you don't know what they are used for, what those numbers are used for, you have no idea what they mean, and you have no use for them. So you won't, it'll be harder for you to learn them. But if you learn, like, when it comes to words, like, oh, hey, this is the word hippopotamus. That's a picture of a hippopotamus. Oh, okay. I, this is what this word is associated with. Now I know what it is. You were saying hippopotamus at three months old? No, I wasn't speaking. Okay. I uh, learned to read before I could talk and walk. So and you, but you could point at the thing, things like that? Okay. Exactly. And uh, three years, about a little under three years later, my dad got me my first dinosaur encyclopedia. I, that's when I got hooked. And then for the next year and a half, I so, was just... So wait a second. At three, at three years old, you were reading dinosaur encyclopedias? Yes. Got it. So um, a year and a half later, I was just... Over that year and a half, I was binging uh, all kinds of dinosaur books, movies, documentaries, TV shows, anything I could find. And then one day, when I was four and a half years old, I asked my dad, Hey, can I want to make my own business. And he told me, okay, you can make your own business, but you need to decide what kind of value you want to create and for who. And I immediately said, I want to teach kids about dinosaurs. And that's where it started. And we went ahead, scripted out the five videos, recorded them. I read them from a teleprompter, and then we made the website and let them go. And I made about 350 bucks from that first little website. And it was, $350 at four and a half years old? Oh, yeah, and that's a lot of money for a four and a half year old. So, at, at, so they were, it was five dollars each. Uh, yes, five dollars for five for, videos. Five videos for five dollars, three hundred and fifty dollars. So, uh, so you had like eighty people or so give you about that. Yes, like uh, five bucks. Yeah. So what? Uh, who were these people that were coming in to watch these videos? Uh, family, friends, but also a lot of outside people who just found me online through social media and stuff. We were actually marketing it through things like Facebook, and my dad actually made, or someone else made an article for me and posted it on uh, Fox News, like the blog that they have, and that that's where a, a lot of the traffic came from that and the social media. Okay, so four and a half years old, you started your business, you made a little bit of money. How did it evolve over time? In fact, we, we, you have a video of your first like sales uh, funnel, like your first video ad that you made for your program. We'll put that in here. Hi, I'm Bodhi Shonen Moore, and welcome to DinosaursAreDynamite.com. Dinosaurs are one of my favorite creatures, and I have many books and encyclopedias about them. My dad and I read together and even dig in the backyard looking for fossils, bones, and teeth. So w what happened after that? Like, where did it go after that? Um, after that, for the next few years, I started making some t-shirts with things I picked up in nature, like literally uh, gluing um, sticks and leaves and like, things like that onto shirts and selling them with uh, custom dinosaur artwork and stuff on it. It was very crude because I was really like four and a half, five years old, but it was fun. And... Then after that, I kind of fell off for quite a few years, and then I focused on schoolwork for a long time, uh, between five and uh, I don't remember what how old I was when I stopped. I think it was uh, five years of schooling because um, I did a this schoolwork online on a community called uh, Bridgeway Academy, and it's very nice. It's like a private school, all the basic four classes, but the awesome thing is there's only like two hours of actual class time and then the rest of the week, you are completely free. The main thing for me was there was too much homework and stuff, and after those five years, I was like, I'm tired of school. I don't want to deal with all this homework anymore. I want to work on my business, but I don't have the time. So mom, I asked my parents, hey, 
can I quit school and focus on my business full time? They talked it out a little bit, but they obviously said yes. And that's when I decided to make my lead magnet, um, which is my free magazine all about Tyrannosaurus Rex and its relatives called Tyrannosaurus Galore. And that has gotten me quite a few, about a hundred people on my email list so far. Okay, so lead magnet, and then how did where did you put that lead magnet out? Um, I used a software called ClickFunnels to build the uh, funnel, to build the website. And it was just name, email, and then the next page, they would download the PDF. Okay, so, and you did that at 11 years old? Uh, yes, with a lot of help from my dad. Okay, so the last five years, you've been kind of like getting that going? Um, I was, uh, I started it, and then about a year later... I decided to, uh, we went to my first uh, Funnel Hacking Live in 2021 or 2022, I don't remember exactly. Or was it Orlando? Uh, yes, it was the Orlando one. And we went there and I got completely hooked and w towards the end of the event, Russell made his offer for two CCX and a couple of other things in Funnel Builder and stuff like that. And I begged my dad to sign me up, sign us up for it so I could build my business and build my community that I'm working on right now. We'll get to that in a minute. We had to call my mom and ask her. We had to uh, call corporate <laughs> and ask her uh, permission if uh, we could sign up for this because it was a $25,000 investment. And she said yes, and we, we've been in it ever since. And it was the greatest decision we ever made. So you bought a $25,000 coaching program, and you were the one pushing to do that. What does the business look like now? Like, what's the plan for it going forward? Um, so once we got into 2CCX, I started mapping out my business, and that's when I figured out how to, um, well, that's when I figured out my new business, well, my community for my business called Club Dynamite using Russell's uh, linchpin strategy. And I am making, currently making a community for that where I teach kids all about dinosaurs and paleontology in easy and fun ways. And I'm just uh, working on that right now. I am following the internal pressure launch at this moment where I am trying to get my customers excited and building up pressure so that the top of the proverbial soda can can pop off and I can make a ton of sales immediately. So what do you mean by that? It's like, get them really excited about something that's not here yet. Yes. So, like, it's coming, you're talking about it, you're telling them, you're sending them emails, you're talking about it publicly, like, it's going to drop soon. Like, almost like, uh, kind of like a drop for Nike shoes, yeah. right? There's this build up for it, they drop, they sell out right away, yeah. things like that. Like, building the pressure, right? Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Cool. So, um, okay, We're, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about, like, how, like, do you get along with other kids your age? Like, 16-year-olds, do you hang out with them? Or, like, who is your peer group? Who do you spend the most time with? That kind of stuff. Uh, it has changed uh, quite a bit over time. When I was little, um, all of my time was spent around adults and amazing uh, value producers and people like that. Like, we have a ton of friends in the uh, in like business and the economic community. Garrett J. White, Sean Whalen, um, Garrett Gunderson, a bunch of people like that. And I used to spend most of my time with people on that level. After that, I started moving into communicating with kids more my age and like connecting more with kids my age. But the thing is, most other kids, like most other teenagers, are, shall we say, have bad attitudes and are not the nicest kids on the planet. And I couldn't connect with people like that very easily. And that's why we've been in communities like this, because every single teenager, kid, adult that I've met in um, Two Comic Club X, ClickFunnels, uh, Teen Tycoon, Seven Figure Flipping, stuff like that, they are all such high-level people and care about uh, mutual respect and taking care of each other and helping each other out, being there for each other, that I was like, look, these are my people. I want to... Be, I want these people to be my best friends, and that's uh, where I am now. So what what do you think, like, I think societally, I don't even know if that's the word, the overall, like, society out there, it's, it's a really, like, challenging place, I think, for someone who is not, like, just playing video games all day, uh, wants to be on their iPad, or, you know, they, they actually have this, like, entrepreneurial dream, right? It, it almost like don't fit in. How do you feel like that? Like, do you feel like that? Like, is that the case a lot of times when you go like kids your age and stuff like that? Just mainstream. 
Like, and, and what do you think is wrong with that? Well, um, first off, even before I wanted to make a business and stuff like that, I never fit in. I have never fit in anywhere. I was always kind of the uh, really excited, really outgoing kid. I made friends really easily, and that's not normal. <laughs> the, you, and that's one of the problems. And once I started making my business, I was like, wow, there's a lot of kids out here that are just being, don't have, either have dreams to do things and their parents crush them, or they had an idea and their parents pushed them so hard that they gave up on it. And those are the two, two of the main problems with kids these days is like the only thing that they can do or they feel like they can do is play games with their friends online or go screw off and stuff like that without getting a lot of pushback. Yeah, so what would you say to the kid who, like, who's listening to this and watching this that doesn't fit in? Like, what's some advice that you would give to them? Be yourself. Don't care what other people think. Have respect for other people. Love everyone no matter who they are or how they act or anything like that. And follow your dreams. What's some advice that you have for the parents that are also that are watching this who have kids that either don't fit in or maybe they're the ones. So let's, let's talk about the parents of the kids that don't fit in. Like, what would you say to them? Well, to all the parents out there, every single parent, no matter who you are, if your kid has a dream and it is attainable in any sense, even if it doesn't feel like it's immediately attainable, support them, love them, let them learn and make mistakes and support them through it in every single step all the way up. And eventually, as long if, if you keep supporting them, keep loving them and allowing them to make mistakes and allow them to pursue their dreams, they will succeed like no other. And that's what my parents did for me. What if the parents don't agree with what their kids want to do? Well, if you're a parent who doesn't agree with what your kid wants to do, be have a conversation with your kid. Be logical and try and uh, speak, talk with them like an adult, how you would communicate with another adult. Have a Socratic conversation with them. Ask questions. Why do they want to do this? Um, how do they want to go for it? Things like that. And allow them to make their own decision unless it's something that they want to do that would put them in harm's way or other people in harm's way. At that point, then don't let them do it. But if it's something that doesn't put them or others in harm's way, ha ask them questions, um, communicate with them, and then allow them to make their own mistakes. Uh, amazing answer. I bet there's a lot of uh, people that I went to high school with that are in their 40s right now that wouldn't know what a Socratic conversation is. So <laughs> very impressive from a 16-year-old. So, like, look, I see... Uh, our community, right? We You mentioned Teenage Tycoon. We've got these kids from age, I mean, all the way down to 7 years old, up to 18 years old, and even, you know, some 19 and 20 year olds now that have kind of aged out that are still hanging around and, and hanging with us. Is they're in a community of other kids that kind of, like, get them. How important is that for you to be around other people that support you and, and push you? And, and don't say you can't, but say you can. Well, um, I've always had that. My entire family, which, like, Every single person in my family, no matter who they are, even like uncles, aunts, gra great grandparents, grandparents, my parents, all have been so supportive and been like, yes, and. Like, do this, and what else can you do to make it even better? And that was great. And also having other kids my age who are doing that same thing for me made an even bigger impact. Because I didn't feel like I was alone in the world. I felt like, oh, there are other kids just like me who want to make millions of dollars, who want to be the best people they can be, and I'm not alone. I do have one thing about public school. You mentioned public school a minute ago. Um, I've got a funny story from when I was little. My parents, um, I asked them when I was really little, I was completely ignorant. Uh, I asked, hey, can I go to a kindergarten? Because I had a friend my age who went to a kindergarten. And they put me in. I didn't last two days, or like a, a day, two days. The teachers were like, hey, Bodhi can't sit still. He keeps wanting to go play with toys and stuff like that. And when my parents asked, hey, okay, well, what are you guys teaching uh, today? And what are you guys uh, teaching the kids? They're like, well, for this whole month, a whole month to be clear, we are learning about the color red and the letter A. For a whole month. And, and 
like my parents were like, of course he's not paying attention. He can read full on books at this point. Of course he's not paying attention. No wonder kids like are taking so long to learn. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. My son, uh, ten years old, I feel like he's uh, he's a smart kid, like really just naturally smart and gifted kid, and he just gets really bored. And when he gets bored, he becomes um, distracted. Yeah, you know, and that's just that's what happens there. It's it's like kind of fitting into, you know, the system. We talk yeah. about that a lot in Teenage Tycoon. Is a lot of the kids that come into our program, they just don't fit in the system, you know. Yeah, and like the school system is outdated. The school system was created back when we were still in the Industrial Revolution and we needed workers. And the and it hasn't changed with the times. Like these days. We, there's a lot more people creating their own businesses and working for themselves, and there's a lot more people who, if they don't like, if they don't have their interest, if they don't, if the school system doesn't hold their interest, they can't learn anything, and the school system hasn't evolved to combat that to help like keep it interesting for the kids so that they can learn everything they need to learn. It's become more like oh, we want more money instead of caring about the well-being of the child. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we're just punching widgets. And uh, as we talk about inside the program, like for me, I just how can we supplement that with all the other things that kids need? Entrepreneurial, money, taxes, all that stuff, numbers. So what are some things that you think your parents did really, really well during your upbringing? Like, you know, all the way from very early on. Like, what are you very thankful for that they did uh, for you? Well, first off, teach me to read at a very early age. Because it was a, it's been nothing but a a plus to my life. I, I don't know another word to say it. It's helped me be who I am today and develop myself a lot sooner and become more mature. That that's one part. And another part is they didn't treat me like a kid. They they treat me they treated me like a kid when it was appropriate. But other times when it was appropriate to treat me like an adult, they did. Like when I was very little. They didn't do baby talk. They spoke in proper words, and they didn't do the, oh, goo, 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 that's a doggo. No. They said, oh, hey, Bodie, that is a dog. That's a Labrador. Instead of the baby talk. And that's that also helped me. The, you know, the parents don't have a manual. It sounds like your parents were did it the best that they could. It was all really great stuff, because I know if I was 16 doing this interview with somebody else, there were a lot of things that I would have been unhappy about with my upbringing. And, and frustrated with. Like, I remember as a kid in public school, all the things you're talking about, uh, I wasn't doing the right stuff. You know, I, was, I wasn't the best kid. Um, you know, I was an athlete. There was a lot of pressure to uh, just all kinds of stuff that, was, that I wish I could go back and just change. But my parents were always there for me. Like you said, one good thing with my parents, they were always there for me. I think we don't have a manual. We have no idea what to do. Um, we just do the best that we can with what we've got. So, where can people find out more about you and join your Dino Club? Well, um, if you want to learn more about me, go check out um, me on all social media platforms uh, except for Facebook at Bodie Shonen, B O D H I S H O N I N. And on Facebook, it is Dinos are Dynamite, M I G H T. My community is www.joinclubdynamite.com, M I G H T for the Might. And my other links are on all of my social media platforms. Awesome. Great job. Do you have fun? Uh, this has been an amazing experience. All right. We'll see you on the next interview.